Good morning, everybody. At least it's morning right now when I'm recording this. It's good to be back. It sounds like I fixed all the problems with the voiceover commentary, judging by the comments on Baffords, and that's fantastic. Let's go ahead and tackle Cragscleft. Now, the report on Cragscleft, if you look at the ghosting rules in the video description, is that it is possible to ghost it. It is possible to perfect ghost it, getting all the loot, but we cannot supreme ghost it. Nonetheless, I'll do all of the supreme ghost requirements wherever I can. That said, let's begin. Again, that's where the intro should have been. That's been separately posted. Objectives. Our map doesn't show the way through the mine, so we're going to have to scout around to make our way to where they hold the prisoners. Cuddy still owes us for the Bafford job. Break him out and we'll get our cash. We've had our eye on Basso the Boxman's sister for a while now. If we break her out of if we break him out of Crag's Cleft, she'll probably be very grateful. Is it the beggar borrowed our lucky hand of glory and knowing him probably hid it from the hammer's body search in ways we'd rather not think about? Get it back. There's bound to be some pricey religious icons in any hammer complex. Try to come out with at least a thousand worth of their stuff. Escape from the prison with Cuddy and Basso the box man. A true professional doesn't leave a mess. Don't kill anyone. As always, we will not be purchasing anything from the loadout. And here we are. Let's begin by looking at the map. We start in a quarry, where the mines break into the surface, as you can see. We have four levels of mines, with an elevator shaft in the middle. Then we have the factory, then we have the prison, and then we have the barracks and officers' quarters. Like Garrett mentioned in the briefing, or the objectives, our map doesn't show the way through the mines. <coughs> Here we have a map of the factory, which is actually quite detailed noting the positions of all the workers, where the freight elevator to the mines is, and showing the way into the prison, alerting us to be careful of guards. Well, no shit Sherlock. Then as we look at the prison itself, we see that it's divided into four cell blocks with a yard in the middle, that each of the four cell blocks has two levels with guards posted on the top level to oversee the entire block, and finally we see that cell block one leads to the barracks and officers' quarters, for which we also lack a map. Now then, you might have heard that crunchy gravel. That's actually a pretty rare surface. I can't think of too many places where it shows up. It's in here, it's in the mission escape, but when there is gravel, it's essentially just as noisy as metal or tile, so be careful. As you dive into this mine shaft, you'll see the first piece of loot, this little diamond worth 35. <laughs> and then we'll surface inside the mine. Next. You see a body there surrounded by flies. This is actually a dead body even though it's a zombie model so we don't have to worry about it. We do have to worry about the flies, they can damage us so just try to squeak by without getting bitten, no problem there. And up at this corner we find a silver nugget worth 50 and a gold nugget worth 100. Our loot total now stands at 185, and we will continue onward. Now, let's just explore a little bit. It's actually been a while since I played Crags Cleft. Ah yes, here we go. Now here's the elevator. Oops. You heard a spider chittering down at the bottom of the elevator shaft and you also noticed how loud the gravel surface is. So let's be a bit more careful as we approach the elevator this time. Alright, now we're going to 
circle around the elevator shaft first, just to get to where the controls are. There's something I need to show you. First, since we want to leave everything as it was, note that the elevator is parked here on the second level of the mines. When we're done, that's where we'll need to leave it. Next, you'll notice that two buttons are broken. You can only go between the second and first levels from here. Down on the first level, there's a spider, much bigger than any spiders we saw in the first mission. And down at the bottom of its mine shaft are two moss arrows. If you want to go get those moss arrows, feel free. It's entirely possible to sneak behind the spider without alerting him at all, but I don't want to pick up the moss arrows. I have no use for them. Now, this fellow is a zombie. If we get too close to him, he'll moan and wake up. So, let's try and avoid having that. Now, what you might have noticed there is that while they're asleep, they are on not a noise or sight trigger, but a simple distance trigger. If you get too close, they will wake up. So, we're going to take a different way and avoid having to pass by that body altogether. As far as ghost busts for zombies go, a little moan like that is enough to bust supreme, but zombies are actually allowed to stand up, wake up, and become stationary AIs without busting a ghost. Your ghost isn't busted until a zombie starts hunting for you and is awake. I'm not sure the exact reason for that. I assume it's because the zombies are on a distance trigger and sometimes you have to pass by one. If you don't alert it, your ghost hasn't been busted. But that's what the rules say. Anyway, we've made it this far. It's, you know, a laughable statement because we've basically gotten nowhere. But we've made it this far with Supreme Ghost intact. Let's keep going. <clears throat> there he is. So we're on the other side of him now. This one is also a sleeper and that hole in the wall is where we need to go it's possible I know to jump and get through that hole without getting a moan from him there's some lack of verticality to his detection radius of course we missed there but you saw that I was able to get very close to the hole without triggering any alert from our friend here I can just manage to act actually make the jump into the hole. It should be okay. Hmm. I don't know why I'm bothering, because it's impossible to Supreme Ghost this mission anyway, but... I don't want to be busted yet, darn it. Oh, that time we made it into the hole, but we did so with an alert. There we go. In the hole. No moans from our friend. Now we'll move up this dark, dark tunnel. I know the video is dark, but the game is also dark. I can't see anything either, so that's sort of the way it's supposed to be. As you look at this room, you see three bodies. Only one of them is a sleeper zombie. It's the one in the far corner, and he is easily avoided. <sighs> now we get up here. There's a piece of loot we need to grab. If you head this way, carefully jump the gap. Thankfully, there's no one around who can hear us, or this would be a lot more complicated. Snag a silver nugget worth 50 for a total of 235. Jump back across. And then, if you jump to the bridge, and then mantle up here, assuming Garrett decides to mantle. You see the path into the top level of the mines, and you also hear some moaning from patrolling zombies. The top level of the mines is where things really get interesting. There are a total of four zombies 
actively patrolling up here, and I have stared at them for hours on previous playthroughs, and as near as I can tell, like most zombies, the actual paths they patrol, while they all have ranges, are completely random. They don't follow a set path, in other words, which makes things complicated and pretty heavily reliant on luck. You'll also notice that it's difficult to spy on them, because if we get high enough to actually see them, our light gem lights up and they can see us too. But we're pretty safe right here. So, the first thing that we need to do is get into the church. You can see that broken window up ahead on the left. There, while there's a lot of equipment we can skip in there, there are two pieces of loot which we need. So, I see two of the four zombies right now. Oh, and by the oh, and he has just spotted us. And by the way, this is the top level of the elevator shaft as well. Two of the zombies have fly swarms around them and two of them don't. So far we haven't seen the two who don't. We have a possible opening here. Let's see. Well, that didn't work out at all. One of the main issues up here is the lack of good hiding places. <laughs> that, coupled with the gravel floor, can make things quite difficult. We need to hope he turns around. Of course, he's headed right into the cathedral, which is where we need to go, but over here is a friendly shadow. You'll notice, of course, that it's not completely dark, but there's not much to be done about that. Not only is it not completely dark, it's also on a gravel surface. It's actually a pretty cruddy hiding place, except for the fact that I believe they don't patrol back here. Take a look. Perfect. So we made it into the cathedral. First, let's get to a dark spot and save. I'll even do a real save because I, I made a bad mistake back there. I quick saved outside of a perfect shadow, which is something you never want to do, but... You'll notice a holy water vial here behind this pillar. There's another holy water vial here in front of the holy water font, and a water arrow in front of the destroyed font. If you're in the business of killing zombies, this is where you get the ammo you need to do it. Over here, you find a healing potion which we're also going to leave where it is. And up in this niche, you find... Well, let's wait for him to turn around. Don't want him to spot us nabbing the loot. You are safe in the cathedral, as long as nothing sees you. A candlestick, worth 50, total 285, and a gold hammer, worth 75, total 360. Now we need to get out of the cathedral, which is significantly harder than getting in, but it is what it is. Like most of this zombie level, this part is based on luck and patience. We just have to get out and get to the factory entrance without being spotted by any of our four roaming buddies. I hear one close by. Well, there's there's one of the two zombies we hadn't spotted yet. I guess that's nice. This surface is gravel. Loud crunches. So 
we need to move quietly across it. Now the issue, it'd be nice if we could just follow these two zombies off to the left, but at any point in their patrol routes, they can randomly decide to turn around, and there's no way to predict how they'll behave. Which, the more I think about it, is a lot more realistic, of course. I mean, well, maybe not for zombies, but for human guards especially, it seems like they'd be too smart to have a set patrol pattern that they just walked over and over and over again because it would be so easy to sneak past them, just like it is easy in the game. If you introduce a little randomness to it, then potential thieves can't predict what you're going to do. I tell you what. I'm going to try and get in a position where I can see down the hall without getting spotted. I'm going to wait until I see both of those guys head off to the right. Well, there's... okay. Oh, maybe we can make it back to that other shadow with, with only one, one zombie over there messing around. Well, actually, I think right now they're both off to the right. Nope. Okay. Well, finally, although I don't now I don't know where the two with fly swarms are. There's at least one zombie off to the left where we need to go. There we go. Now, from here, we can watch and wait. It should be obvious why sneaking out is so much harder. It's because the zombies can come down this hall and you have to wait until it's clear. Thankfully, they don't come into the actual cathedral. The irritating thing about the mines, if you hadn't already noticed, is that you can be in a rendered shadow, but your light gem will still be bright. And there you see the randomness, because last time he turned around and headed back to the cathedral, but after a quick load he decided to turn right instead. Who knows what's in his head. Unfortunately, speed can definitely be of the essence. But he heard us. So I think we have to wait a little longer. Perhaps he turned around. Let's hope so. Yes. Yes. Let's quick save here. Let's head down here. Here's another good shadow. Now, the zombies kind of patrol a big circle. We're currently on the other side of that circle. But there are a few actually good shadows on this side. That's the good news. Like this one. <laughs> now that we're out of the cathedral, the hard part is definitely over. Let's hope these flies don't bite us, though. That has been known to happen. If it seems tense to you just watching me squat here with all these zombies milling around, you have no idea how tense it feels. Sorry about the sniffles, my cold is actually getting a little worse instead of better. But what can you do?
unfortunately, we don't want to take any damage. There we go. Sometimes a little bit of rushing is the key. We were able to get here into the lakes without getting spotted and avoid having to sit there and let those flies chew on us. That is good. Now that we're out, well, we're not out of the mines yet, but we're about to be done with zombies and deal with humans instead, and that is much easier. Humans are far more predictable. All these halls would be close packed with novices, striving to learn our teachings. There are novices still. But fewer, brother, fewer. Youths in this time seek to learn about gold and politics, not honest craft. It will be their loss when they come of age and know not how to accomplish aught of consequence. And there they go. <clears throat> This is our introduction to the Hammerites. They are... very interesting characters. I rather like the Hammerites. I was happy to see them make a return in Thief 3. And... for those of you who are inclined to combat, which I'll never understand, but I know they exist, Hammerites are much tougher than the guards you the standard guard you saw in the last mission. Now if you come over into this alcove, you find the last bits of loot for the mines, another silver <laughs> nugget, 50, total 410, and a gold nugget, 100, total 510. That's really the only number you need. You should be leaving the mines with 510 in loot. We're already halfway to our objective. That's pretty cool. Of course, our real objective is, as always, to get every piece of loot. That thousand number is just silly. Now we have to get up this stairway. Can't douse the torch. Let's do a real save. Being through the mines is definitely worth it. We're just going to wait until the patroller is headed off in the other direction. Whenever do our best to get by the around, stationary fellow to here. Dinner, that's what I would like to know. Because so many now build without consideration for the master builder. His mark is no longer upon the life of the city, and the taint of the trickster will always seek entrance. You wish people I have to work with so incompetent, so stupid, so lazy. I don't see why I should be the one to be put with these incompetent people. All right, past those two, we'll do another save. And we have arrived in the factory. There are a few ways to tackle this, but right off the bat we can say, I can tell you that there's nothing useful in the factory. The only thing to do here is sneak through it. Hello? Oops. You'd think I'd be smart enough to wait until his footsteps were quiet before I opened the door. Okay, let's try it now. I think you'd hear the door opening and closing because it's so noisy. Now we should be able to see him turn around and leave. Now we can follow him. 
Just a little ways. For now. And the builder said, if the foundation is now, you wail and never speak. That's the actual factory. That's one of the workers, obviously. Entering through there is a piss poor idea. Onto that huge metal grate, right into the face of a hostile guard. Good shadow, time to save. You want to get onto this wooden walkway up above the factory. As long as you're quiet, they won't hear you. But you do need to be careful of these metal gratings on the corners. Just quietly creep over each of them. Apparently, we should also creep across the wood. Or at least wait until his back is turned. Waiting for his back to be turned seems a little bit easier. One other issue to note is that all three of them, when they're finished making hammers, will come and place them in these boxes. What you want to do is get onto this railing, crouch, drop, and then get to this shadow, just like that. I wish I'd been able to execute that a bit more slowly, but I'll explain what I did. If you get onto the actual railing, you'll know you're all the way on because Garrett will be able to crouch. Then you can slide off the railing and silently land on the stone and quickly run into this hallway, which is the entrance to the prison, which is worth another real landmark type save. In truth, I have never heard such carrying on as this thief's pawn cutty. One would think these scum had never faced tribulation in their lives. For a time, I thought Block 4 might never sleep again for his coughs. But he quiets now. Good. Death or Doran's twill be the same for him in the end. Both of these guards have keys we need to pickpocket. So, we'll snag that one right now. Wait until he's gone. Yet also with the hands of a then sneak up on him. Maybe do it a little less quickly. That guy has a long patrol. We have a while before he comes back. Has someone come? <clears throat> Again, I moved too quickly. Hmm. I thought I. This key is identical. Bye. By the. We don't want to. We'll eventually have to return. I it. hear thee. All these people I have to work with are so incompetent, so stupid, so lazy. I don't see why I should be the one to be put with these incompetent people. I heard that. Stop right. The I'm issue, of course, is that fire. dropping Chase the keys the tends fire. to make some noise. Roof and doorway, block and beam. Chase the trickster from our dreams. Halt! Halt! Thief! There's got to be a good way to do this. Stand forth and speak thyself if thou... <laughs> Hold! What is that there? <clears throat> Over there! <clears throat> By the builder. I heard that to thy son. I 
Has someone come? <coughs> well, our inability to return that key will become our first supreme bust. There will be more later. Let's see if we can drop it here. <coughs> It's in the same room. It's the best I can do, I think. Let's see if maybe we can get a little closer. I hear thee. Apparently not. Okay, that'll have to do. I don't know why Garrett can't gingerly set these things on the ground, but it seems like he can't. We heard them say Cuddy was in cell block 4, so let's go there first. Now you'll notice a few things here. There's that guy. There's the patroller from earlier. That camera can spot us, and it will make problems for us if it does. It'll trigger an alarm. This guy has another key. protects us from the squalid past. Is our weapon. I imagine we'll we be similarly hand. unable to drop it close to him, so let's try for the same room. That seems to be the best we can do. Now, when I'm playing these missions, <coughs> if we were speed running, we'd go ahead and head into the sewers, but I prefer to play the mission the way it was meant to be played, and I think we're meant to be referred to Naman, the corpse in the sewers, well after we first sneak up, so I'm going to leave him be for now, come back for him when the designers intended us to know that he was there. What is that? <coughs> Yay. Who come? <coughs> this is difficult. Creep nice and slowly, we ought to be able to get up the stairs without getting caught. Who packs us there? I say getting caught <coughs> without getting noticed at all. Like I said, we're not going to be able to finish the mission this way, but up to this point, we still have Supreme Ghost oh. intact, which is pretty good. Yay. Those of you who are familiar with this level, I'm sure, already know the major issues which will prevent us from ultimately succeeding in our endeavor. Yay. Okay. Damn it, Garrett. There we go. Got through there. Now let's head towards block four. But first you'll note that our patroller's coming back, so let's hide in the shadow and let him go by. As we move into block four. There's some very obvious shadows to sneak through. That's that's Cuddy for the curious. Looks like this guy's headed upstairs, so we'll follow him there. There are a total of 11 pickpockets in this mission. If you've been keeping count, we have three so far. The statistics say 12, but 11 is the most you can get. I'll explain why that is when we get there. 
Wait for him to turn around and then cross the patch of light into the shadow. Excellent. Do my eyes show? <coughs> Not certain if we can cross now. Let's find out. Yes, we can. Good. Now, from here, we can lean in and grab his <coughs> key. I heard that. Show that. <coughs> Not sure where we can how close we can get and still drop it silently. That works. <coughs> Excellent. Of course, it would be better to I do it. That. Oops. Show thyself off. Knowledge is our weapon, with which we call... Who goes there? Think not that thou shalt... worry about his key in a minute. Right now, we can use it to unlock the door. <coughs> Let's peek inside. The bottom lever on the leftmost side is the one that will <laughs> unlock Cuddy's cell. Who goes there? Who made that noise? Even dropping his key on the table doesn't work. Okay, that didn't quite work. I do want to read that ledger. Cell block four, one, possum, lady taker, gelding, four, Misa, vandal, whisking, factory work, five, wills, heretic, meditation, factory work, Six, Cuddy, Thief's Pawn, Palm Scalded Daily. Eight, Tibble, Whore Keep, Died of Flux. Oh. As you can see, the hammers <coughs> are quite willing to mete out justice to those who violate their tenets. There's gotta be a way to do this. Perfect. Now. We just need to get down there and chat with Cuddy. <coughs> Is that the... Oops. back down to level one, and let's talk to our friend. <laughs> Alright, old man. Let's get you out of here and me my money. <laughs> Afraid you're gonna be disappointed? Good thing you're dying, Cuddy, or I'd have to kill you for stiffing me. Again. Snap, snap, puppy. <laughs> but I owe ya, so... Felix went after the Horn of Quintus, down at Bonehold, <laughs> left me his notes. The hammers got him, put him in their evidence box. Loot collection, more like. Upstairs. Officer's quarters. Once you're up there, in passage, if damp hadn't rotted my lungs, Obviously, we won't be escaping with Cuddy. Now, for whatever reason, patrolling hammers can see his body and blame it on us. So, we need to make sure that instead of the well-lit center of the cell, the body is placed in a dark corner. Like that. Let's check out our new objectives. 
You'll notice we've successfully completed the first, sneaking through the mines and factory to the Hammer Prison. Locate and release Cuddy is now irrelevant because Cuddy's dead. We'll leave his body in the cell where it is. <clears throat> and we've been we've added the objective to find the evidence locker and retrieve Felix's map. <laughs> so to avoid suspicion, we're going to sneak back up and close Cuddy's cell once more. <clears throat> The nice thing, of course, is that those doors automatically relock. Nay, you tear it down and begin anew. So shall it be with all my children, whether they be stone. Let's explore cell block 3 next, since it's on the same side of the prison. We can move into the other cell block here on the second level by going through this door. Where's the mechanism? There it is. I think it automatically locks, same as the others. Yes, good. All of the cell blocks, if you haven't noticed already, look exactly the same to each other. Well, not quite exact. Mirror images would be more accurate. Wait for him to turn around and sneak into the next shadow. Oops. I always get in a hurry, and that is never good to do in these games. There we go. Oops. Again, we wait. At least we're out of the patrol path now, so I'm a lot more comfortable waiting. <laughs> Alright. Same as before, we'll nab his key. And we'll do our best to Hold. stash it as, as close by as we can. It seems as if you're outside a certain radius, they won't hear it at all, and if you're inside the radius, it'll be like firing <coughs> off a gun, and there's really no difference. Alright. <coughs> now, let me show you the problem with getting Basso out of there. If we enter in the normal fashion... This fellow sees us. And he flips out. I don't know why he would, but he does. <coughs> Is someone there? I, I, I'm harmless. Leave me alone. See? All these people I have to work with are so incompetent, so stupid, so lazy. I don't see why I should be the one to be put with these incompetent people. It is possible to do this, however. It is a very difficult move. Hmm. Vigilance is our shield that protects us from our squalid past. Knowledge is our weapon with which we carve a path to an enlightened future. The first step is to get onto this metal railing without making any noise. Which is tough to do. Oh, what was that? But it is possible. Hold thy pla- <coughs> Over there! Hold oh, thy pla- <coughs> Ask <Who's> someone- <coughs> Stand <Who's> forth! <coughs> Who's there? What- <coughs> I hear someone thee! There? <coughs> <coughs> 
Over there! Stand forth and declare thy name! The idea is to get into this patch of shadow right here and do Never so fear, and I shall spy thee out. And do so silently. This could take some time to get right. I'll annotate the video and let you let you skip ahead if you want. <coughs> And again, I apologize for my voice. I just realized I've probably been speaking quietly again, so I'll do my best to pick up the voiceover commentary at this juncture. All right, his back is turned. By the oh, <coughs> Halt. Be someone there. Well, dang it. We managed to get over the metal silently, but he actually heard us stepping across his stones. By the this is another move I need to thank Clatramus for, by the way. I don't know if it's just lots of experimentation or if he's simply brilliant, but either way, the man is a genius when it comes to managing to ghost these missions. By the Crud! Stand forth and speak! Crud once more! I have to tell you, nothing feels as frustrating as making it over the metal and then triggering his rage with a footstep on the stone! <clears throat> Who is that? Th it also seems that I can't manage a save with him facing the back. Every time I quick load, he turns and faces forward again. Come on, buddy. Turn around. All right. Stand forth and speak thyself if thou be there. Dang it. <clears throat> I should say, however, that as difficult as this little move is, <clears throat> we can do it. We don't have to accept a bust here yet. I hear the That does happen later. Am I getting impatient? Perhaps. 
over there. What I'd like to do is manage to land on the stonework silently. And then take a minute to crouch down. Because every time I've made the jump, stand forth. He's heard me step on the stones. Halt! Thou art my prince. Vigilance is our shield. It protects us from our squalid past. Unbelievable. Knowledge is our weapon with which we carve a path to an enlightened future. Maybe we do just need to wait for him to turn all the way around every time. Identify that. Drop thy weapon! Damn it, Garrett! <laughs> I know you're excited, but settle down. Halt! Be someone... Well, that time I didn't make any noise, so... And he still spotted me, so... Did something make a noise? He's seeing me, so I need to land farther out. When am I going to get my dinner? That's what I would like to know. Come on now, come on. These people I have to work with are so incompetent, so stupid, so lazy. I don't buy the builder. Turn, turn, turn. <clears throat> halt. Be hold thy place. Identify thyself. There are just so many levels on which this move can fail. <coughs> I hear oh, drop. That? Stand forth and speak thyself. has to be possible to do it without triggering an alert. I know it is. <clears throat> mm, I thought I heard something. I really wish I could quick save with him facing Stand backward. forth and speak thyself if thou be there. change the direction a little so we angle out away from him instead of into him. <clears throat> it's something make it You'd think I'd at least be able to manage the silent jump by now, but you'd be wrong. <clears throat> Ask someone Halt! Be someone there? <clears throat> hmm. I thought I... Ooh, that was so close! Hmm, I thought I heard... <clears throat> Alright, well doing it from this angle is the right way. I just need him to stay turned around long enough. <laughs> and... I hear the... Remember to crouch. After the jump. 
Did something oh, make that? a noise? <clears throat> Identify the builder. Hmm, why do I have to be the one down here guarding all this one? Up? Did something make a noise? Here he won't see us. We've got that level solved. Hast someone come? At least. The word went before him, on a breeze carrying our salvation. Here at last is a man with the mind of a general and the heart of a poet, yet also with the hands of a builder. He will lift us up from the earth. Hmm. I thought I spied. Hast <laughs> someone come? Hold thy pl- Stand forth and speak thyself if thou be there. Did something make a- <coughs> Identify thyself. Is someone there? Hammer anvil, forge and fire. Chase away the hook. <sighs> if you're feeling frustrated at this point, you're not feeling half as frustrated as I am. That's the most I can say. <clears throat> Did something make a noise? And the word went before him, on a breeze carrying us. I heard that. that. Stop right now. Let me try a different tactic here. I thought I had Let's see if we can identify thyself. Is someone if we can mount up to the metal railing. Hmm, I thought I heard some by the builder. Ask someone. Stand forth. Drop thy weapon. is the way to do it. It just seems to require a great deal of patience. <laughs> if you're wondering what that second clang was, we landed on the alarm bulb, which you may be able to just make out in the darkness <laughs> there in front of his booth. Someone there? Halt! Hey. <sighs> 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 
Stand forth. Drop thy weapon. Hast some I'd like to just practice making the jump silently. I need to be able to do that. Hold thy no matter what. As a it's something pretty simple starting point. I hold thy when everyone else is on hold thy play I defy the builder from whence came thee back to thy cell villain all right <clears throat> I did it three times in a row there so one would hope I have it down let's find out The real bitch of it, if you haven't already realized this, is that we're going to have to do this twice. That's right, we're going to have to close Basso's cell after we take him out. I From what shadows? Something. Did something make a no? <coughs> halt. <coughs> halt. 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 If only he had. If only he had turned backwards either of those times instead of forwards, we would have had it. Yes! That alone is worth a real save. Holy crap! All right. Now from here. With a little use of the magic lean key. I believe it's possible for us to do two things. We can hit, we can open Basso's cell, which is the middle lever in the second row. I want to read the notebook too. By the builder from my Hold goodness do we have to be careful. Just out of reach. <coughs> Over there! <coughs> halt! Thou art my- Well, the good news is we don't have to read the document to keep Ghost intact, so... From what shadow sprang thou, Let's get to villain? it and then reload. Cell Block 3. 2. Dicket, Heretic, Sour Mash. Released upon recantation and informing. 3. Latin, False Tale, Tongue Pierced, Factory Work. 4. Basso, Firelighter, Branding. 7. Dirna, whore, shorn and branded, to be released. 10. Tarkis, gold lender, nose cropped factory work. 
two cool bits of continuity here. First of all, Dickett is the author of one of the tips that you can purchase at the beginning of the mission, the guy who was just released. And also, if you remember back to Lord Vafford's Manor, Tarkis is one of the two patrons of Drekboon that had been captured by the Hammers, according to Baffert's note from Dominic. So, good little, good little bits of continuity. Now let's reload, and let's slip down to the first floor. From what shadows? Well, one would think it would be simpler. I guess we have still have to wait for him to turn around. That's what I would like to know. Hmm, why do I have to be the one down here guarding all this one? Turn around, butthole. You'll notice we can drop down without making noise, without being seen. Well, there's Basso. If he weren't unconscious, it'd be simpler, but now I'll have to carry him out. Alright, so we've got Basso. Excellent. That's worth a real save. Supreme intact. Basso in hand. We're going to bring him up to level two. I'm gonna wait and see. Okay, we're gonna have to let this patroller go by. This is a perfect shadow, so we don't have to worry about him. Going to drop Basso right up here for now. And now, oh yes, Virginia, it's time to do it again so we can close Basso's cell. After all, we wouldn't want the hammers to notice that it's open. Still, succeeding once, it imbues you with a sense of confidence that it's possible, and you can Has do it again. Come? And then we screw up an easy part. Such is life. <coughs> We're back! Oh my gosh! I can't believe it! Time to do this again! Are you excited? I'm excited! As before, I'll annotate where you can skip to. This is gonna be a long video, I just realized. Very long! I've already been at this over an hour. Good grief. Unbelievable! He does it on his first try. Shut that cell. I can't believe I did it on my first try. It took me half an hour the first time. WTF. No matter. Back down to level one we go. Smoothly and silently. Nice closed door. Let's do a real save. Definitely worth it at this juncture. <clears throat> Time to head through the yard. You'll notice that from this central yard, we can access all four cell blocks. There are also three wandering patrollers who go through all the different cell blocks. One of them has a key that we want to pick. So we're going to wait for him to show up.
this is a nice little break. I'm gonna do a real save here just because it's a nice safe spot. We've found and sprung Basso. We found Cuddy. And one of the hardest moves is done. But don't you worry, there's plenty of difficulty left. But for now, Supreme Ghost is still intact. <laughs> There's the guy with the pickpocket we've been waiting for, so let's nab that key. And you'll notice something funny now. He can't open the door anymore. <laughs> I think that's funny. Let's let him through. Let's wait until the yard is empty and then drop the key we just picked. Because it is, as you'll notice, also a copy. We're alone once again. Let's drop the key right there. And now we'll head into cell block two. There's only one thing to do in cell block two. All is quiet. Somebody spotted me. Didn't happen this time. Good. The only thing we need to do in cell block 2 is get his key, if we want it. If you're not going for pickpockets, which you don't actually have to, you can skip cell block 2 altogether and head right to block 1. First, let's nab the key. Next, let's find an acceptable distance to drop the key. Then let's read the ledger for block two. <laughs> Cell block two. Two, Potzel, Vandal, fingers crushed. Five, Gelland, thief, wrist broken. Eight, Naman, jackablade, flogging. Died neath a righteous punishment. Remember that name, Naman. It's gonna pop up again later. But with that done, it's time to head to cell block one. Hello? Dang it. Very good. Wait until he turns again. Turn around, butthead! I believe he sees us if he's only turned. I'll be there. Well. Cross into cell block one, being wary of patrollers. <laughs> like that. The three rovers can all end up up here, I believe. Oh, 
All right, here we are in cell block one. Fourth verse, same as the first three. Uh-oh. Another prisoner wants to spot us here. See that? Have to be careful here. Have to move nice and slowly. I'm not sure what the best way to do this is. I know we can get into the shadow without bothering him. Halt. But step forward. The the hammerite needs to give us a little more time with his back turned because we have to move slowly. There we go. What was that? Creep very slowly through here. You should be able to keep your gem completely dark. And as you'll notice, this guy is very jumpy. I mean, move super, super slow until you're past him. I don't think that was an alert. Alright, good. Alright, now, if you'll excuse me, fourth burst, same as the first three. Lean in. Grab the key. <coughs> Find a distance, he'll let you drop it. <laughs> now we need to get in here. Two things to do. Open the second lever in the right row. Gets us into... Oh, excuse me. It needed to be the third lever. Good grief. Yeah, I saved with that cell open, so... When everyone else is out running around, when am I going to get my dinner? That's what I would like to know. We'll wait until he turns back front. That should do it. That's closed. This is open. This is Isit the Beggar. There's his our hand of glory disguised as his left hand. If we go to the objectives. We have released Basso. We have gotten our hand of glory back. Still need more loot, still need Felix's map, still need to escape with Basso. Can't kill anyone while we're doing it. Now, there's a couple things left to do here. Just going to shut Isit's cell. Identify thy son. <laughs> Once again. Read the ledger on the way out. Cell block one. One, Rendell, jack -a blade flogging factory work. Four, Delin, lady taker, scalding. Seven, Senate, cutthroat, razor finger removed, caning factory work. Nine, Isit, cadger, caning and sour mash, died neath a righteous punishment. <laughs>
We need to head to the barracks. <clears throat> we'll have to very carefully creep past Senate. Now we know his name again. First, we have to get to that shadow. Waiting for the guard to turn his back one final time. Now, it's time to creep very, very, very slowly once more. free as far as Senate goes. Uh, we need to be wary of the patrollers. I think I... Well, no, he's he's receding. Wait for the hammer to turn around. Come on, you butthole. Turn around. <laughs> Finally! Down to level one. Oh, not yet. Spot us. So we'll wait for him to pass by. <laughs> Try it one more time. Oh. Still not yet. Unbelievable. Time to head to the barracks. Park it right here. Save the game for real. Now, what you'll doubtless have already noticed is this priest right here. There is no way to get by this priest with Supreme Ghost intact. We can't sneak behind him, we can't sneak past him without a first alert. <coughs> the only way to do it is to do some tricks with boxes and nudging that shove him around, but you'll remember if you've read the Supreme Rules that using Dark Engine exploits is against the rules. So, getting past him requires us to douse the torch. <coughs> So we will go ahead and do that 
and accept a bust of Supreme Ghost. Normal Ghost, however, remains intact. Hello? Show thyself. That also raises a first alert. But, such is life. You can't Supreme Ghost Crags Cleft. He's the first reason why. Let's get upstairs. I think we can do it without an alert. Intruder, beware. Well, okay, I gotta go faster than that. As you see, we got through there without even getting a first alert, but that no longer matters. We have busted Supreme. This must be how they spend all those tithes. The first thing we're going to do is follow this patroller to get a little bit of loot. Loot! Been a while since we saw any of that. But there's a lot of it up here in the barracks. Follow him. As long as he doesn't hear you, he won't turn around. Once he's passed, open this door. Grab that purse. 100 loot, total 610. Now if you peek in here, you can get some broadhead arrows. Over in the kitchen, there's a water arrow. But obviously... I don't need any of that, so it will be ignored. Now we go back to the room where Garrett made his snarky comment about tithes. This is a wealthy room. Each pedestal has a golden hammer. Each is worth 75, total 685 and 760. You also see those two gold candlesticks over in the window. Each of those is worth 50. Grab them for a total of 810 and 860. Very good. Now, before we tackle that room, let's go ahead and go upstairs. Inch it forward. There's a patroller outside. He carries a key that we want. And I believe we can lean through this window to pick it. Ah, not yet. Here we go. We should be able to get his key through this window, I think. Yes! Very good. That's 9 out of 11 pickpockets, by the way, if you've been counting. As we head back into this room... There are a few things we're going to see. The first is this safe. Have to nice and quietly creep right up to it. The evidence locker. Open it. Get a tiara worth 125, total 985, and a diamond worth 100, total 1085. That's enough to get our loot objective. Of course, we have already busted Supreme. Don't forget, you can't get into the barracks without breaking the rules. Such is life. Close the locker again, if we can get Garrett to look at that. There we go. Now, we head to the other room. Well, not quite yet. Let's read that scroll before we do anything else. 
Brother Keybond, I charge thee to organize a search detail for that Jack Blade Namon. Somehow he hath slipped his bonds whilst Brother Inquisitor did turn for but a moment. Now he hath escaped with half the contents of the evidence box. Brother Carpenter hath reported a commotion to the west whilst he was repairing the stocks. Start thou there. If the wretch be not found soon, doubtless he hath succumbed to the rigors of his interrogation. In truth, I wouldst rather find him in a search now than by the reek later, and who knows what may become of his mortal frame should he reach the haunted mines. Put the scroll right back where we found it. We will need to return that white key eventually, but let's hold on to it for now. We need it to open another locker. Cross that little tile strip, there ever so slowly, as always. As we move through here, unlock this, this safe with a white key. Grab a diamond worth a hundred, total eleven eighty-five. Grab a golden necklace worth two hundred, total thirteen eighty-five. Lock the safe again. Now here, behind this banner, there are three bottles of wine which we need. The problem is we break Ghost, let alone Supreme Ghost, if we slash the banner open. We do want those wine bottles, and we've already busted Supreme anyway, so what we can do is a little quirk of the dark engine that, I guess they call it keyholing, Obviously, this also busts Supreme Mode, but what we have to do is stand against the banner here on the left and also hug the pillar, and then I don't know exactly how to do this. I'm going to have to play around with it for a while, but there's a way through some use of the lean keys to stick our heads through there and grab hold of those wine bottles without having to aha slash open the banner there it is what I did was I positioned myself here and I held down lean left lean forward and lean right at the same time and I was able to stick my head through there, grab the three bottles worth 50 each, total 1435, 1485, and 1535. With that done, let's head back downstairs. Only a little bit of loot left now. So at this juncture, we have again busted Supreme Ghost, but uh, Ghost Mode is still intact. We don't need the Silver Key anymore, so before we leave, let's drop it back in the window where we found it. Wait until he's nice and far away before we do. That should be far enough. No, that was not far enough. He began looking for us. Maybe that's far enough. Yes. All right, what could be left, you ask? Yet another seriously hard bit, that's what. Back downstairs. First things first, a little bit of straightforward sneaking, which we don't get to do that much of. Come here, wait for the patroller to get by, 
head into that room, and the first thing we'll do is listen to the two of them chat. Let's do a real save at this juncture. Heard thou, Terius, seeking to save his purse, didst buy his new knife from the Sheminobs, not our smiths. How durst he? Had he no shame? He certainly had some fill of shame when his blade did snap at supper. Ha. The Sheminov are shoddy craftsmen. Tarius is well learnt of it. Now, here is another issue. The priest has a key, and there's a golden hammer on the table. But if we move up those stairs, with the two of them looking at each other like that, we're going to get spotted. There's also a book up there that's fun to read. Now, it's possible to draw them out of there by making some noise. And another dark engine bug that sometimes happens is that that novice will turn around or he will over the course of a long time like 10 hours long move over into the opposite corner and then you can move up there now the issue with him turning around which is the only thing that allows us to get both the gold hammer and the uh, key is that it's a bug. It's not repeatable. It just sometimes randomly happens. If you wait about an hour before triggering their conversation, sometimes he turns and sometimes he doesn't. He didn't turn for us. That means that, for the first time, we're going to have to let a piece of loot slide. We can't get that hammer if he chooses not to turn around, and he chose not to turn around. If we waited about... If we waited a while, the novice would, as they say, fidget his way across the room and we'd at least be able to get the priest's key. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait and see if we can trigger that bug. I don't believe in off-screening anything. With that in mind, I'm going to leave the recording running and see what that novice gets up to. Obviously, when I upload that video, I will take some time and allow you to skip after the novice does something. I'm actually going to take my headset off and go take care of some business and come back after a while. And I'm just going to have to leave this running to see what the novice does. My aim here should be obvious. I want to get everything I possibly can. So even if I can't get the hammer, I do still at least want to get the priest's key. So, I'm going away. I will annotate the video after some hours to let you know where you can skip to to see what the novice ultimately does. I am going to leave it recording, though, just because I know that there are people, myself included, who want to have the option to see everything. So, like I said, I will try to satisfy both constituencies by letting you sit here and stare at the novice, just like the camera is going to do or skip ahead several hours depending on your preferences I'm gonna take the headset off just let the recording run because I'm in a safe spot go take a shower get a bite of lunch all that good stuff and I'll see y'all when I get back all right